de ma santé, malheureusement, je ne pas me présenter ici ce soir, que j'aimerais saluer tous les amateurs de l'UF et remercier les, les amateurs pour toutes les années qu'on nous a supportés. Aussi, je vais remercier les lutteurs qui sont présentés ici, les lutteurs de mon temps. Alors, à tout le monde, je souhaite une belle veillée puis bonne chance les Browns. Allez donner un bon spectacle. This is Hannibal from the Hannibal TV. Dot com, Canada's most popular pro wrestling YouTube channel and we are going back to August the 18th 2018 the retirement match of not only Jacques Rougeau but his three sons Cedric Rougeau Jean-Jacques Rougeau otherwise known as JJ Rougeau and Emile we just saw a special message that played on the video screen from Jacques' father, Jacques Rougeau Sr., that basically thanked the fans for their years of support of the family and wished everyone at this show well, including the older wrestlers who were attending this show. I know Gilles the Fish Poisson was there, another guy I've done an interview with over the years that can be seen on this channel. I've also done one with Jacques, a full career interview that people can look up. But this was a very special night. 11,000 fans were at IGA Stadium. This is the former stadium that the Expos used to play at years ago. It has since been reformatted a little bit for tennis. And here we go. Jacques Rougeau taking control right away with an arm bar, but it's been reversed now. Fireman carry takeover now by Rougeau followed up by a throw to his opponent here the Rougeau family are taking on Velvet Valentine Silver Valentine Uncle Paul and Le Predator as you see the massive Cedric Rougeau on the outside of the ring he had a WWE tryout in I believe 2017 and I personally feel it was a huge mistake that they did not pick him up this guy has the Rougeau name and all the potential in the world to be a huge star but now he is retired they all retired after this match unfortunately but if you're gonna go out you may as well do it in front of 11,000 fans in your hometown as you see Jacques Rougeau making fun of his opponent there who's trying to stall now he tags in I believe this is Uncle Paul Uncle Paul in the ring now he is from the United States of America and here in Montreal Quebec the USA is not very popular for whatever reason and he's being heavily booed here he's doing a little dance trying to stall trying to break the crowd a little bit the Rougeau certainly have the crowd on their side Emil is in the ring now the youngest of the Rougeau uh, sons is he gonna go for a test of strength yes now Emil is the smaller of the two here but he's not lacking in heart but a knee to the midsection of Emil takes him down to one knee as this guy is just mocking the Rougeau family. Now Emil starting to get up, showing very impressive strength here. Now he reverses it, flips him over, and now he has him in a wrist lock. Monkey flip sends his opponent flying. He doesn't even know where he is. Reversal, does the famous Rougeau backflip. Some showboating now, but a drop kick right to the sternum by a mill. And this Uncle Paul now is going to the corner. As the fans are going nuts here at IGA Stadium in Montreal. I was there that night and it was a great atmosphere for wrestling as we see JJ Rougeau in the ring now. Goes for a lockup but his opponent moves out of the way. 
telling him to back up now and watch this. What's he going to do? Nip up. He's trying to take things down. He wants to see if JJ can do a nip up. JJ is probably the most gymnastic of the three sons. Of course, Jacques Rougeau could do a nip up too in his prime. And there is JJ with a perfect nip up. Now it appears they're going to get back down to business. No. One of the uh, Valentine Brothers tag teams slowing things down. Going to the top rope. Does a backflip off the top rope. More showboating here as we can see the large crowd in the background. You're rarely going to see a crowd of 11,000 fans at an independent show as we see Jean-Jacques with a perfect backflip right there. Jean-Jacques, I believe, works in the forestry industry as his uh, regular job now, but he had all the tools to be a big wrestling star. Now Jean-Jacques is saying, watch this. Standing backflip, what a display of athleticism by Jean-Jacques Rougeau. Now, of the three boys, I actually know Jean-Jacques the least. I, of course, trained with Jacques Rougeau a little bit when I got into professional wrestling. Found him to be a wonderful trainer. Cedric was just a very small boy at that time, so was Emil. But I could see the potential in Cedric even back then. And is the opponent here going to do a backflip? I'm not sure if this is Velvet or Silver Valentine, but it's definitely one of them. Let's see if he can do the standing and backflip. Very difficult move to pull off. He says no, and he gets a drop kick right to the chin by Jean Jacques. He's now cowering in the corner. He tags in, I believe he's tagging in the Predator now who appears to be over 300 pounds, just a big, massive man. And Cedric has been tagged in now, six foot six or six foot seven, 315 pounds himself. Is Cedric Rougeau, as we see the tribal tattoos on his shoulder. I believe Cedric is in the car selling, car selling business now. I believe he's a manager at the car dealership last I heard so we see a big power move there by Cedric nice hip toss and now I believe this is Jean-Jacques being tagged back in drops all of his weight right on the knee area of one of the Valentine brothers and then Jacques Rougeau Jr. follows up. Jean-Jacques is tagged back in. Sorry, that was a mill that was just in there. Now it's Jean-Jacques. Three of the Rougeau families now working on the leg. Here comes the fourth. But I don't think Cedric is no. He's just going to give this guy, I guess, uh, almost like a turkey bone, wishbone split. They're going to do it again here. I don't think this guy's going to be able to walk now. That is painful. And a third time. The referee is giving the Rougeaus some leniency here. Getting away with those kind of tactics. Those are not uh, catch of catch as catch can tactics. But this certainly is. Nice trip there by Jacques Rougeau. I believe he was in his late 50s when this match took place, but he's still showing that he's in top shape. Double chop now as you see the sweat flying off this guy. JJ tags Cedric back in the ring now. Double arm twist. Now the other direction, another double chop. Sends their opponent down to the canvas. Cedric showing that he hurt his hands on that. Could we see a gorilla press by Cedric? JJ's calling for it, but no, they tag Emil back in the ring. But Predator interferes, hits Emil on the back of the head. Now the referee didn't see this, but the Predator just ripped the neck of Emil. 
across the top rope and there was no tag there but the predator has entered into the ring against the smallest of the Rujo sons throws him against the rope sidewalk slam here reminiscent of the big boss man who was one of Jacques Rougeau's opponents of course Jacques Rougeau is a multiple time WWE tag team champion as well as a former WWE intercontinental champion Jacques Rougeau is one of the very few wrestlers who can say he defeated both Hulk Hogan and Bret the Hitman Hart of course Rougeau famously beat Hulk Hogan when Hogan was at the top of his game with the NWO in a WCW match in Montreal, the only WCW show that ever happened in Montreal. As we see some big elbows here to a mill, taking a lot of punishment in this match. Now they're taunting the crowd. If I were these guys, I would stay on him. Don't give him time to recover. He is the weakest link of the Rougeos being the smallest and the least experienced. You do not want him to tag in as we see a big body slam here to a mill. And we're going to see something off the top rope. Oh, the famous Swanton Bomb from one of the Valentine brothers. A move that Jeff Hardy has made famous. This could be it. Two, three, no. A mill kicks out. He is not going to let his family down. He's not going to let his grandfather down. And by the way, I hate to say this, but I don't think I mentioned it at the top of this show. Jacques Rougeau Sr., who had the video message at the top of this video, unfortunately passed away July 1st, 2019 at the age of 89. My sincere condolences to the Rougeau family, but he lived a full life, highly successful man. As we are seeing a dance here by Uncle Paul. They need to stay on a mill. They're making mistakes here. The Rougeau family definitely have the upper hand going into this match, and now they're taunting them. Picking on the smallest of the four and just taunting the Rougeau family now. They should be going for a pinfall attempt. It looks like we might see a camel clutch here, but he doesn't have Emil's arms around his knees. He doesn't have this move fully cinched in. It's still putting a lot of pressure on his neck. But Emil's trying to inch his way towards Cedric, it appears, but Uncle Paul stops him. Now Uncle Paul slaps Cedric's hand out of the way, continues the, to mock the Rougeau family. And he's now gone back into this version of the camel clutch. But it's not the regular version that you would see with the armpits over his knees. And now Emil has actually made the tag to Jacques. But the referee didn't see it. The referee's telling Jacques to get back to the outside. Uncle Paul now pulling Emil back to his corner. And if I were them, I've said it a million times, they need to finish off Emil right now. We see Cedric now getting a bottle of water. He's throwing the water in frustration at the Predator, who is not legally in the ring either. But the referee, for whatever reason, is staying on the Rougeau. Jacques is now in the ring. And the referee is seemingly ignoring that the Predator is in there illegally. Doing a little dance here, taunting the Rougeau family. The referee is losing control of the match here. As we just saw a huge clothesline to a mill. The Predator is not the legal man in the ring now. But I think the referee actually believes that the Predator is tagged. He was too distracted with watching what the Rougeau family were doing. We're seeing the Predator now go into the top rope. He's calling for something. This is a big man coming off the second rope, rather. Thought he was going to go to the top. Second rope, leg drop attempt, but he lands flat on his behind to the delight of the crowd here in Montreal. He looks to be in a lot of pain, but he's grabbed a mill now. 
Emil seems to be half knocked out at this point. Going for a choke slam. Just throws Emil right to the corner turnbuckle. Emil is out of it. And again, this guy is stalling. The Predator is stalling. They need to stay on Emil. But I believe they're taking too much time here. And yes, I'm correct. Emil moves out of the way. The Predator hits the turnbuckle. Emil is being rallied by the capacity crowd here. They all want him to tag in. One of his brothers and Cedric has been tagged in. He jumps over the top turnbuckle clothesline. Another clothesline. Double clothesline to the Valentine brothers. He is fired up here. Throws the Predator off the ropes. Big boot to the sternum. He now has Uncle Paul. Throws him outside of the ring. Cedric Rujo, a house of fire here. Another hip toss to one of the Valentine brothers. Throws the other one into the corner. Back body drop. Cedric Rougeau showing his power there. Monster of a man. And now JJ's in the ring. Looks like he is going to flip the other Valentine brother out of the ring. It's going to be a pile driver here now from Jacques Rougeau. The most dangerous move. In professional wrestling, he may have just broke that kid's neck. The crowd is going nuts here. The Predator is back in the ring now. With three of the Rougeos, the referee has lost all control of this match, not making any attempt to get the Rougeos out of the ring. Huge body slam now by Cedric, picking up the 300-plus pound Predator. A mill now being set up for the Cannonball, the Quebecers' old finisher. Yes, there we go. He hits the cannonball. The Quebecers were three-time WWE Tag Team Champions, of course. They could finish the Predator now, but I think JJ is going to be the icing on the cake. 450 splash. One, two, three. The Rougeos win. The end of an era. The end of a great era in Quebec wrestling. The Rougeos have retired. So what do you have to say about your uh, retirement match? It's over now. The honest truth, the Rougeos are the best. <laughs> My sons were awesome. Um, doesn't life go fast? Um, I, I, uh, I'm so happy my dad gave us a message too before our match. He was 88 years old at home, sitting at home, gave us a message on the giant screens. Uh, I, the fans, I, they were so nice to me and, and this honor that they gave me tonight, they gave me two honors and, and this means the world to me, help the kids, you know. I'll get you to hold kids. it up so I don't shoot your... Uh... Just, just to, to help the kids and then this honor, I, uh, I, I think I'm asleep with this thing tonight. <laughs> And then the, uh, uh, this thing here, I don't know what he was telling me, but it seems so important. It seemed really, uh, and when he gave it to me, he says it's the real McCoy. So whatever it is, I'll find out. But uh, That was the director general of... Uh, crim criminology or something? Yeah. Something like that, and then I'll find out. And, uh, and I want to thank the fans, you fans out there, and you too, Devin. But you fans out there. I want to thank you for your support through the good and bad times and, and always been there and tonight you showed me you were there and uh, I'll never forget you. I don't know what I'm going to do tomorrow, <laughs> but thank you all. Thank you very, very much. I hope that's not the last time we hear the Rougeau name chanted in a stadium. Thank you, Devin.